and some solved problems for chapter 24. We have two slits. We know the distance. Go ahead and convert that back to meters. It says it's going to produce a fifth order, so that tells me that m is going to be equal to 5. Bright fringe, kind of a key word to look for, that tells me that it's going to be integer multiples of wavelength. It's going to be the path difference. And I know what the angle is. So I, for constructive interference, I'm going to say d sine theta is equal to m lambda. So again, integer multiples of wavelength tells me that my that my wavelength is going to be d sine theta divided by m. So 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth multiplied by the sine of 8.6 degrees. Divide that guy by 5. And I'm going to get my wavelength to be equal to about 5.4 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. And some more practice using double slits. I've got two wavelengths, so wavelength 1 and wavelength 2. Go through some slits, and I know the slit separation, so I know D. I'm looking for how far apart the second order fringes are. So something to pay attention to is second order, M is equal to 2. And fringes implies we can see. We can, we, we're, we're looking for the uh, constructive interference, so it's going to be the bright ones. And I know it's going to be projected onto a screen about a meter away. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say, well, first of all, I'm going to say you know, my standard constructive interference, E sine of theta is going to be equal to M lambda. And we could go ahead and solve for you know, the sine theta and you know, work out some hypotenuses and all that good stuff. But we're talking about small angles. So we're going to say this is going to be roughly equal to d tangent theta is equal to m lambda. Tangent, opposite divided by adjacent. So we're going to say d multiplied by x divided by l is going to be equal to m lambda. So now what I can kind of say here is, is as, as I change the wavelength, I'm going to be looking at different x's. So I'm going to have some x1 and then I'm going to have some x2. And what I'm really kind of, what they're really kind of asking me for is what is that delta x right there? So let's go ahead and say that this x is simply going to be equal to m lambda uh, multiplied by the length of the screen divided by the distance. So let's go ahead and do this for the first one. So x1 is going to be equal to 720 times 10 to the negative ninth. Got my m. And then I have my length, 2. Divide that guy by 0 0.62 times 10 to the minus 3. And so I say x1 is going to be equal to 2.322 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. Go ahead and type that in for x2. And you're going to come up with 2.129 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. And now all I'm really interested in is this distance right there, delta x. So it's going to be, you know, x1 minus x2, or x2 minus x1, either one. And that's going to go ahead and type all that in. And we're going to end up with about 1.935 times 10 to the minus 4th meters. And now some work with just a single slit. So we have some wavelength going through one slit. So I know the uh, thickness of the slit and the wavelength. And I'm looking for the angular width of the central diffraction peak. So really what it's kind of asking me is, is you know, wh how wide is this, is this bright spot? So you know, what type of angle does this guy subtend? Well, if you kind of think about it, the angle that it subtends is going to be two times the angle to the first dark spot. So first dark spot tells me I'm going to be looking for m is equal to 1. And in that case, d sine theta is going to be equal to m lambda for the dark spots. And in this case, I'm going to say, well, I'm looking for theta 1. So divide both sides by d. And you know, that guy's going to cancel out. Take the arc sine of both sides and say, the angle is going to be equal to the inverse sine of m lambda divided by d. Go ahead and type all this stuff in. You know, inverse sine, m is going to be equal to 1. Got my wavelength, 680 times 10 to the negative ninth meters. Divide that by 0 0.0425 times 10 to the minus 3. 
and I'm going to get an angle that's going to be equal to 0 0.9168 degrees and kind of as I said the angle that it's going to subtend is just going to be two times that so it's going to be 1.834 degrees and now a diffraction grating again we only have one equation to work with we're going to say d sine theta is going to be equal to m lambda and this is going to be for the bright spots but I'm only ever going to ask you about the bright spots so we have some wavelength we know that it's a second order so that tells us that m is going to be equal to 2 and it tells me the um, spacing so really it's just kind of a simple straightforward um, calculation divide both sides by d and take the inverse sine so theta is going to be equal to inverse sine of m lambda divided by d so inverse sine of 2 times 510 times 10 to the minus 9 divide that guy by d 1.35 times 10 to the negative fifth meters be careful here this is in meters and it gave it to me in centimeters pretty much always want to convert back to meters so that tells me my angle is going to be 4.3 degrees and lastly a pro problem with polarizers here we're going it's going to be a, a tough problem by the way so we have, we have two polarizers so polarizer number one and we're going to have polarizer number two and it tells us that the relative angle between these two guys is going to be 48 degrees and remember every time you go through a polarizer if you have polarized light it's going to cut it down by a factor of i naught cosine squared the angle in between them if we had unpolarized light going through a polarizer then it's simply going to cut it down by i naught over 2 however we don't have unpolarized light going through this polarizer we have light with some preferential polarization through it and it's going to go through first this polarizer so we're going to say we have some initial intensity i naught it's going to cut it down by i naught cosine squared theta 1 now we have light that's polarized going through this polarizer it's going to cut it down by the initial intens intensity that's going to be all of this intensity so it's going to cut it down forgot my squared by i naught cosine squared theta 1 that's my initial intensity now it's going to be mul multiplied by cosine squared theta 2 that's accounting for this polarizer right there and it tells us that this is going to be equal to 0 0.35 35% 35 of I naught and believe it or not that's really all there is to it now it's simply a matter of signing of, of solving for what we want to know so first thing I'm going to do is you know, divide both sides by I naught then I'm going to divide both sides by this guy and and, it, and end up with cosine squared theta 1 is equal to 0 0.35 divided by cosine squared theta 2 take the square root of both sides and then take the inverse cosine of both sides and get theta 1 is going to be equal to the arc cosine so cosine inverse divided by, of the square root of 0 0.35 and then cosine notice, notice that the square root has taken away one of those squares of 48 degrees and we're going to end out with 28 degrees.